Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. Guess what? It's time for sentence again. I haven't done one in a while, so hopefully I picked out one that will be an epic. Um, it has a bunch of high-ranking players, a lot of well-known faces, and maybe we can get some good action out of it. I'm going to go ahead and introduce the team. As you may have noticed, I do have my mini-map back, and I'm doing things like I was before. Hopefully, I have fixed the crashing problem with a driver regression, so maybe I will actually make it through this cast with dual screens up without getting knocked out of the game, because that would suck. All right, let's go ahead and introduce the teams, and then we will jump directly into the action. I do believe that this was a random factions, random positions game, which is typical of Settons nowadays in the high ranks. Don't know why they do that. I really hate doing this, but uh, to each his own. So on the beach position, we have Foley for the northern team. In air, we have Crotalus taking UEF, and well, getting handed UEF, which is about the worst hand you can be dealt for air. Lanalus, UEF again. Whoops, my bad people. I flipped my mouse too far over. I will correct that and then we shall carry on. And then on the front, we have Seraphim, TA for life taking that. So we've got three UEFs and a Seraphim. Very odd faction combination. Hopefully the little whoopsie right there is not indicative of what will happen for the rest of this cast because I really want to get this one done and out and have a good one for you guys because it has been a while since we've had a real good epic game. Galactic Fear has Seraphim on the rock position. We've got Shades of Blue UEF on the front. In the beach slot is Nargrim taking Seraphim and then Aeon in the air slot with Softly. So we have uh, 2700, the freakishly terrifying score of, of Galactic Fear, and Softly, the 2k rank, and then a 1500 and a 1500. Then on the northern side we have 2200. 1600 and then 19 and 19. I'm not sure how to call the balance on this one. It may actually be slight, and I do say slight, numerical advantage to the north, but overall I don't think that really gives an accurate picture of the game because Galactic Fear is absurdly good and he is in the strongest navy position, so he will have a lot of control over the map over the course of this game. And then softly is a very adequate air. Now, Crotalus, despite the rank discrepancy, we're talking about 1600 to 2k, I think Crotalus is actually the better air, but he has been hampered by the UEF faction that was handed to him versus Softly's Aeon, and that's going to give him double RAS, access to the Restorer and the T3 Torp Bomber, and overall just a much better position to play air from. As always, the middle mass is going to do a lot towards influencing the game. Shades of Blue actually taking a more optimal position than TA for life. TA for life leaving his ACU idle for just a moment. He's going to fire on these tanks, which is basically a complete waste of time. And he's going to hand the reclaim advantage to Shades of Blue, basically no contest. Very nice use of the tanks up here, eliminating any other... I think there was an engineer up here. Yes, there was... Tanks were able to eliminate the extra engineers, so TA for life is not going to get any more extra reclaim, whereas Shades of Blue did get an engineer down here. Galactic Fear has his island drop at approximately 320, which is very nice, very early for air, uh, or for a transport, rather. And then same thing going on over here for Lanalus. Lanalus dropping very early with that transport full of engineers. Let's see, we had three engineers for Galactic Fear and four for Lanalus. In a second here, we will check in in the middle and see who got the better of the reclaim about another minute and a half, and all of that will be sucked up. Meanwhile, let's go ahead and take a look at the build. Softly taking a traditional air build, building power generators around his mass extractors and upgrading them very early with the assistance of the reclaim from mid. He is currently third in the score, and let's take a look for Crotalus. Crotalus is down nearer the bottom. Lower mass income and lower, actually higher power income. But Softly is making use of the adjacency. Crotalus is not. He has a single adjacent power generator right here. And building his adjacency around the air factory, which is oddly enough producing engineers. Kind of strange. Looks like Shades of Blue is delaying his expansion to the mass extractors 
for unknown reasons. He has two Tech 2 Mass Extractors and almost a third, and he is throwing down factories fairly close to the front line, but he did neglect to get his expanded mass, or extended Mass Extractors. TA for Life, on the other hand, has got two... He's upgrading all four at the same time. I don't think... Yeah, he's going to stall pretty hard here if he doesn't pause some things. That is not going to work out very well for him at all, but he does have all of his mass extractors. So that's going to give him a little bit better overall outcome than the southern side. So he does have one more tech two than the south when they actually finish, which these are on 95. So crawling at an incredibly slow pace towards completion because that many mass extractors upgrading at the same time without massive income from reclaim is basically just destroying yourself. All right, Shades of Blue picked up 7,300 mass. TA for Life picked up 56, basically. So Shades did get the advantage in reclaim, but I think he is going to get run over at some point because TA for Life had a much better overall build, getting his factories online in a reasonable fashion, starting production of land units, He's already got a lot of tanks up here. He's already had one run by down here. And this is not going to get any better for Shades of Blue, I think, because he's already falling a bit behind on mass income. He did step out to the side. He's getting the Tech 2 upgrade, whereas TA is still unupgraded but running to the water, so I think he will be capturing an upgrade momentarily. Galactic Fear building Navy from the island. This is kind of a new meta that I've been noticing. Rock, I don't see a whole lot of people build Navy from the beach anymore, at least not at first. They'll get their factories online and they'll get their main production here, but more and more I'm seeing a naval factory thrown down from Rock. And in this case, this is actually nearly early enough to be called a loosely defined naval rush. And these are some tenacious tanks down here. We've got one running clear across the map headed for this engineer mass extractor over here. Then we've got one headed south as well. Nice little run by by TA for life that's going to cause not very much damage, but a whole lot of annoyance. Waste some APM of the negative team, or of the southern team, not the negative team. They are below the northern team in position, but not in status. Very nice interception from... Foley, but Galactic Fear actually turned that into a nice little interceptor killing party. He did not completely win air control, but he is in a much stronger position than he was previously in air. Got frigates passing each other as they go about their merry business. And Foley is going to have plenty of navy in place to deny anything that Galactic Fear throws at him at this point. TA for Life is also getting the Tech 2 upgrade. Shades of Blue completed the Tech 2 and is getting another upgrade. Probably Gun. Yes, that is what it is. I'm looking over here in the chat right now. Tech 2 and Gun is probably one of UEF's strongest combinations, but it is matched by the Seraphim T2 Gun upgrade. The guns behave a little bit differently, but effectively they, uh, they do accomplish the same thing. So not too terribly worried about that. I am getting comfy here. I'm going to be here a while. This is a set in the game, and I'm actually going to bump up the speed now because, of course, we're going to be here a while. I wanted to catch all of the early action without missing anything. But, uh, yeah, might as well get comfy. Grab yourself a drink. We will take in all of the sights as they come at us and just kind of enjoy the relaxed feel of Settens. This is why I like playing Settens. Settens is for the most part, um, well, it is stuck in a rut, but it is a comfy rut. I like playing Settens because it's familiar and comfortable and in an odd way comforting. I, I don't know. I am against playing Settens exclusively because it does decrease your skill level, I believe, if you always play with the same people in the same style on the same map. But on the other hand, come home from a long day at work, sit down at the computer, play or watch a Settens game. You kind of know what's coming from a mile away, but you know, the completion is part of the appeal. 
On the northern side, we have another drop attempt from Galactic Fear. This time, it is NG's. Maybe we'll see a proxy base. Who knows? Still, oh, nope. There's the drop. Building Navy way out in the middle of nowhere. Going to be extremely sneaky about this, but we have scouts going out from Foley. That is completely circumstantial, but that's actually the luckiest break that Foley could have had at the moment. Because he's going to have early intel of this naval base before he gets sideswiped by a surprise Tech 2. He's going to go ahead and direct his frigates up that way. Galactic Fear had better get something online quickly up here. He's going to lose the mass investment of all of these factories. He's building engineers from several of them and throwing Tech 2 on this one. Frigates are moving in this direction. I have to see what happens here. Nope, there they go, headed north. I think that this proxy base is actually going to get denied because there are a substantial amount of frigates headed that way and there is no denial tool in place unless he starts quickly, quickly building torpedo defense. He does have a sonar but not anything else. Ah, there we go. Torpedo launchers going down in the middle. And more engineers building. I do not know who wins this. That is going to be up to the individual skill level of the players. Still got a tank back here. When I said tenacious tank, I really wasn't kidding. That thing survived till 1130 and very nearly killed a Tech 2 mass extractor. It was probably already damaging it in the Tech 1 phase, then it finished the Tech 2 upgrade, stayed at the same percentage health, and then was very nearly killed, but still, that is a pretty cool tank. Very, very difficult to get rid of. Alright, this torpedo launcher was clinging to life by a fingernail, but it is going to go down. There's no longer any build power, and I think all of these factories are going to die. Got one single frigate and a Tech 1 sub, but the Tech 1 sub takes very long to knock out a frigate, so it's not really going to be able to help before all of those factories go down. I would imagine that Galactic Fear is going to declare that a lost cause and move on with his life. We'll have to see what course that takes. Got attack base coming up for TA. TA opted not to go for the ACU attack missile. He is going for a stationary attack missile in this situation. I really would have recommended an ACU attack because not only is it harder to deny, but if he chooses to progress any further up into the neck, the ACU attack will move with him. And that will allow him to potentially attack not only the rock, but also the beach player's base. And the last factory goes down. Tech 1 sub kind of hanging around, laying down some fire on these frigates, but as you can see, it's not really doing anything to help. So Galactic Fear has to come up with a different plan. I like his idea. I like proxy bases, but that one just was not meant to be. Alright, the attack launcher is loaded with one. It's going to go ahead and fire. Probably headed for some eco. Then again, it might be headed for the ACU. Yes, it is. 2K hell. Shades of Blue is in trouble. If he takes any kind of hit at this point, he will go down. That is a single strap bomb worth of health but I think he is actually going to escape. We got TM, not TM, no. We got mobile missile launchers coming out. Those are gonna start laying down some fire on the Tech 2 point defense, hopefully knock them out of the way so that the subs can actually do something. TA for Life, of course, does have the gun upgrade, so uh, gotta be careful what you do with your spam there. Got frigates moving into the home base as well. Galactic Fear moved to just about 100% sub production. He's still got a frigate every now and then. But the subs are going to be much handier for dealing with the frigate threat. Once you get a critical mass of subs, you can easily take out frigates on the approach. You just have to engage them a little further out. And they get exponentially better as the game goes on because they don't die to the frigates. So your numbers keep increasing without ever really truly decreasing unless you get hit by counter subs or torpedo bombers. Got a Tech 1 bomber moving in here. Probably, nope, I was about to say he's probably firing on the mobile missile launchers. He may very well have been, but was just denied 
by that anti-air. And Galactic Fear trying again for this base. We got uh, Torpedo Launcher up here. Frigate coming in to try to kill off those engineers. Fr uh, torpedo Launcher going to start targeting this frigate. I keep saying, uh, I really need to stop saying, uh, because that is not a good thing to do when you're exercising your public speaking skills. My bygone instructors from my school days would have my neck for using the phrase, um, that many times in a row. I would be tempted to opt out with the my brain is tired excuse, but honestly there is never an excuse for poor speaking, so I will not ask you to forgive me. Um, ha, <laughs> there we go, I did it again. T3 is online, Foley has executed the infamous UEF T3 jump where you spam the ever-living daylights out of frigates in hopes that you can push your enemy back far enough that you can gain the time necessary to build a T3 factory and a battle cruiser. Once your battle cruiser is out, you can see here the Galactic Fear is running for the hills. So he is going to have to fall back, regroup, build something else, and try again later for this battle cruiser. The one lucky thing he does have going for him is that he is Seraphim, so he can submerge and emerge with his destroyers according to the situation and actually do a pretty good job of countering anything that UEF can throw at him. TA for Life is continuing to be a thorn in the side of the southern team. He has progressed about two-thirds of the way across the neck. He is reclaiming all of this battleground down here, throwing down point defense, radar, anti-air, and everything else that he can possibly get, and basically sitting in the worst possible spot in order to cause the most trouble for the enemy team. And then he is also moving to hover spam production. Hover spam is probably the greatest gift that the middle can give to the friendly team. Oh, that was a large yawn. That is not indicative of my current enthusiasm. When the mid player goes hover spam, it will throw off the traditional naval balance and present a very interesting challenge to the enemy naval player. Um, you do have to spam more frigates to deal with the hover spam, but then if your friendly navy is going 100% T3 units, battlecruisers, battleships, a mix of the two plus shields, the hover spam from the front player acts as a denial tool for the higher tiered units for the enemy team because they have to continue to build frigates in order to deal with the hover spam while the longer range T3 units of the friendly navy can overwhelm positions. This really does do wonders for the naval game. You can easily stomp out an opposing navy with the two working together like this. Right now, TA for life is owning like a boss. It does not look like he's winning that hard because he has set up shop right here, but honestly he is playing this as well as he possibly could in any situation. He's up to 106 eco, pushing hover tanks like a madman, throwing some mobile artillery in there with it, and he is roughly double the score, the uh, mass income of the opposing front. So even though he has not decisively won it, that was an attempted mercy snipe, but that got absolutely nowhere. Um, and that is the best thing that the front can do there, is just move into production to help win the Navy. Now Galactic Fear, you can see how many frigates he is building and how quickly he is building them. He's building them out of Tech 2 factories. They're a support factory, so basically that means they're just more build power. He's not really paying for the Tech because they have same mass for mass equivalent build power as the Tech 1 and Tech 3, and probably the Tech 1 engineers as well. Um, but those are just going to be able to allow him to throw out massive amounts of frigates very quickly and that is going to pretty much wipe out the hover tank advantage that was thrown at him just a minute ago or the hover tank disadvantage and that's going to allow him to get up an enormous amount of destroyers also he does have a T3 UEF factory an engineer was given him to him by a friendly player and that is going to allow him to build battle cruisers of his very own and also compete with the inevitable arrival of the summit from the north. On the bottom side here we do have a contracting navy here 
There is the battle cruiser out for Lanalus. Lanalus has moved Tech 3 as well. UEF is really the only way to go, folks, on Navy. It is very, very strong and hard to deny. If you don't have Navy, basically, you just need to borrow a, Navy, a, an, a UEF engineer and have at it. I could not decide if it was a UEF or an engineer. It was an engineer or a UEF. English is an absurd language. It has so many rules and exceptions and generalizations that aren't necessarily true of all things, and it's just a pain in the butt. Why can't we all be German with their creative word mashing and all kinds of cool stuff? And the frigate war is engaged. I really don't want to say who I think is winning at the moment because it could be wrong, but uh, yeah, I'm going to say it anyway. Because of the battle cruisers, I'm going to go ahead and hand this one to the orange player. Definitely going to be a decisive win for them because of the extended range of these guys. These destroyers cannot compete with the range of the battle cruisers. The destroyers must stay surfaced in order to kill off the frigates so that all the build power isn't wiped out. And because they have to stay surfaced, they are easy targets for the battle cruisers. That is not a good situation to be in. We've got air coming in. We had a bunch of gunships firing, but a lot of them got killed off. Air is going to run back north a little bit and circle, dodge, and weave. That is basically the name of the game in air these days. Got many, many battle cruisers on the field here. We've got two for Galactic Fear, and we've got four for Foley. And Foley's actually doing the right here thing here, building 100% battle cruisers because battle cruisers are for naval supremacy. I know the battleships do that as well, but any time. You're in a close quarters fight like this, and you're pretty much guaranteed to be in a close quarters fight because the Seraphim Destroyer has so little range. The battle cruiser is going to be a far, far better option than the battleship is. On the southern side, still skirting away. Got three battle cruisers on the front now. I'm just waiting for the battleship, but continuing to build battle cruisers. Although that really isn't a bad thing for the above mentioned reasons and basically the faster you win the faster you get the game over with so why not use the battle cruisers they are very good aggression tools ta for life has finally been forced back to his home he is not going to be able to push any further into galactic fears naval production he does have navy of his own over here building cruisers in, in order to bombard the southern team We've got tech 2 stationary artillery online for Shades of Blue, not that it's going to do him a whole lot of good in this situation because, yeah, Tech 2 Stationary Artillery really is not mass effective at killing anything, much less Navy. Got the... nope. I thought we had a Tech 3 Seraphim factory online, but I was terribly mistaken. Only Tech 2. There are two Tech 3s online for UEF Tech, though, so... He may actually be able to get better options that way anyway. We've got two battleships out now, throwing so much build power on those. Galactic Fear far ahead of anybody else. The only person that comes remotely close, well, the only people are Softly and Lanalus, both in the 390s. And then Galactic Fear, a whopping 470 rounded up. TA for Life is going to push his hover towards the southern side. You can see he actually has a couple of... Uh, I thought he did. Never mind then. I was about to say he had a couple of engineers, but I miss Saw. The only engineers are right there. He's going to push hover tanks and hover artillery down through the build power. Going to do a lot of damage to these areas and probably kill off some engineers. But at this point, I don't think it really even matters because Norgrim is not long for this world. His base is being obliterated by Navy. TA for Life is going to be a real downer here. He is stamping his paw down firmly upon Norgrim's neck and is going to wipe him out with no mercy. Of course, why should you leave anybody alive? If you leave prisoners alive or if you leave survivors, then they actually have a chance of coming back for you and that is definitely not something that you want to have happen. 
That is Tech 3 mobile artillery and some Tech 2 stationary artillery firing away at this Navy. Gonna take out some harmless, uh, well, not harmless, but relatively minor compared to the rest of the stuff out here. Um, Zooies. Although, Zooies can be pretty annoying, so maybe one less will be a good thing. No, what would be really funny is if there was an ACU standing down here and he was like 60 health away from dying, and that those couple of artillery that were killed right there were the deciding factor in his winning and losing. That would be really funny. I would laugh over that. Got Omni up in the middle here for the northern team. Crotalus is running that. And then on the southern team, I don't believe I see Omni. Unless I am just terribly missing it and am blind as a bat, which is definitely a distinct possibility, but I'm not really going entertain to it, entertain it at this moment because I know that there is not an Omni there. So many frigates. So many frigates. There are 71 frigates in that clump. Why do you need that many frigates? I don't know. Seems like it's the equivalent of Tech 1 spam. Of course it is Tech 1, so yeah, it's Tech 1 spam. Tech 1 land spam seems like the equivalent. And my CPU is down to zero score. Brilliant! We're at 27 minutes and I'm zeroed out. Woohoo! Once again, make yourselves comfortable, little people. Grab a drink, grab a snack. Let's enjoy this together. Talk about your lives amongst yourselves. I'm sure some of you are on Skype with other people while you're watching this. I know I'm on Skype and I watch YouTube videos. Or not Skype, Mumble. Because Mumble's amazing. Much better than Skype. Very much, uh, very good interconnectivity with Mumble because you can kind of minimize it in the background and forget about it. And For me, it doesn't really interfere with as many things as Skype does. For other people, it's the opposite, but to each his own. We will all get along anyhow. We've got three battle cruisers and three battleships, along with several shield boats and then frigates to front. Galactic Fear, as usual, has a very beautiful naval mix. He's pushing his frigates around to the southern side. Not sure how much good they're going to do down there. We've got coopers and cruisers. Never mind, they are going to do a lot of good down there because the only thing down there is coopers and cruisers. So there really is no opposition to his frigate rush. He is going to completely surround this battle cruiser and battleship with frigates and lay waste to them and then hopefully he will be able to deal with all of these guys from closer range the biggest strength of the summit class is its range if you can take that range away from it then it is pretty much weaker than any other battleship because of its odd firing sequence got tech 2 torpedo armors coming down to finish the job Air player is going to be very nice and helpful to the rock player, going to help eliminate these Tech 3 subs, which are a pain in the buttocks of anyone who tries to deal with them. I know that they were severely nerfed, but they're still annoying as all get out. I don't think they should be nerfed anymore though, because they're already pretty dang weak. So many Tech 3. UEF, well, I don't know. Seraphim, people spam Seraphim ba uh, battleships like there's no tomorrow, so I suppose that's the same deal. But T3 on the field is a beautiful thing to see, especially when it's Navy. It's always fun just to watch the uh, guns fire at each other. Kaboom, kaboom. Casually floating around on the water. Subcom is such a beautiful game. I do love this game. Wish we had a modern adaptation of it. I would buy it in a heartbeat. Actually, engine the same, units the same. I would pay full price for a reskin of FA. If they updated the graphics and if they had multi core support, which I do realize would require rewriting the engine, so basically, this is a moot speculation because it's never going to happen. But if they could get the engine to run on multi core and uh, update the graphics to modern standards. I would be all over this game for a re-release. And yes, I know Supreme Commander does run, what, 20-something simultaneous threads, but the entire simulation is on one thread, which is why computers bog down. For those of you who watch, I know that this is old news to a lot of people, but there are many people who watch this channel that don't regularly play Subcom enough to know this. Um, if you press the, um, the apostrophe key, you get a console right here. You can type in ren underscore show net. Ah, there we go. Press the F key and hit. 
Then you get a little box over here. This is a very handy little box. You can see your um, statistics for your CPU and everything else. Let's go ahead and zoom down here back on the Seathotha that had entered the picture so that you can see the mayhem and carnage unfolding before your very eyes as we talk about statistics and numbers because you know what? This is a mathematician's wet dream right here. A completely simulation based um, real time strategy game that combines massive robots, cool insects, and math. This is exactly what you want. Um, right here, you can see that my CPU actually just dipped barely to negative one. I'm on local right here. So this is the speed that my CPU is capable of running at. Or actually, I think this is the actual replay speed. Um, anyway, the box is much more detailed if you actually go into a uh, game and have a bunch of players in there. But you can see everybody's CPU stats. You can see their data, how many packets they're dropping, how far they are behind, all of that good stuff in that little box and then to get rid of it you just repeat the command and BAM you're done exit the box ineffectively trying to kill that Yathotha with mercies it actually did take off about half the health and now we have a GC in pursuit but it was not able to kill it so that Yathotha is going to continue wreaking havoc as it treks towards the southern base galactic fear is still not able to completely overwhelm Foley which is actually pretty surprising considering that Galactic Fear has been reclaiming this whole time, but I can only imagine what Galactic Fear is about to pull out of his back pocket having that much reclaim. He has slowly progressed across the map. He has engineers coming up behind him as he goes, and holy crap, that is a lot of reclaim sitting right there, and uh, Galactic Fear, if he can hold this position, will get 100% of it. So this is going to be a nasty, nasty surprise a little bit later for the Northern team. Although this is not good right here. Could have been worse. There was a lot of damage done, but all four players are still alive. You have four ACUs in the pool, and you did not lose 100% of the eco down here. But it's still very, very, very bad. It's going to be hard to, to uh, come back from. And another chicken is headed towards the south. That's going to be interesting. Anyway. The entire simulation of Forged Alliance is on a single thread. So, regardless of how many cores your CPU has, um, the single thread performance of your CPU is the only thing that matters for Forged Alliance. Which is why, and I'm not an Intel fanboy at all, I do realize that AMD can actually compete in multitask, multi-thread, um, which is not a very large segment of uh, applications, but it is getting to be larger. Intel blows AMD out of the water on single thread speeds, so you pretty much need to go Intel if you're going to do large games like this. That being said, I have a 3570K, which is quite the respectable uh, CPU, and I am still running zeroed out on this game. You can see my speed is set at plus two, and I'm bouncing between plus one and minus one, depending on what's happening in the game. So for anybody who's wondering why they have slowdowns, in long extended games, basically this game only runs as fast as the slowest CPU. Tack launch! Headed for... somewhere down south. Possibly a battleship. I don't know. And that one is going to attempt to be a face punch on the Athatha, but it did not work out. Shades of Blue running in terror from this full health chicken, and he is just barely going to get out. This is what you don't want to do. If you have a T4, you want to walk towards the ACU. You don't want to target the ACU because then the uh, it wastes fire on other things. It walks a couple steps forward, targets, stands still, and then the ACU walks out of range, has to walk a couple more steps, walks out of range, etc., etc. And it ends up slowing down the speed at which you could kill the ACU. You just need to walk in. That's all you got to do. Just walk in. Don't worry about all of that micro stuff. We are down to Galactic Fear and Softly. Softly has nearly double eco, and then Galactic Fear has a good portion of the units over here. Gonna have to see how this turns out. I am not liking the odds for the Southern team. This is not looking very good. Norgrim is forced back into a corner, basically has nothing left. He's trying to build a T3 power generator and building combat preset SACUs then on the northern side well the the upper end of the map we had this base fairly wrecked by a T4 we've got a single GC here and naval bombardment coming in 
with a vengeance and then the northern air player i think is vastly outproducing the southern air player crotalus as anticipated the better of the two just by experience that is nothing against softly softly is a brilliant player as his score reflects but when you play only one map most of the time and you spend a ton of hours on it uh, you will get better at single maps and single positions and here's a nuke waiting to see where exactly that is going to strike probably over here somewhere and the nuke defense is not loaded that is a pity why that's not loaded I don't know but that's gonna be a whole lot of production and power that is going to just go poof softly who was already behind is now in even more dire straits galactic fear just keeps plugging away it's like a juggernaut that cannot get displaced and he is now pushed enough <clears throat> that he is able to dip some engineers into this reclaimed field here and once that reclaim starts coming online, I bet he could probably build a Maver and not really see the dip in his ego. So I think it's up to Galactic Fear to win this. Softly is collapsing, air is being lost more each minute after that hit to the production. This navy is completely lost and we're now seeing expansion onto the land. The only hope left for the northern team is this navy up here and I think Galactic Fear is about to seal the deal. Let me see here, we've got... A whopping 13 battleships, 10 of them on the front, compared to Foley with 6. So that is a tremendous advantage in favor of Galactic Fear. Galactic Fear is going to slowly grind this position into paste, reclaiming as he goes and he will be free to build whatever the hell he wants. And what the hell he wants is an Awasa, and why he's building Awasa I don't know because air is lost and lost hard and ah, that's an SACU. I was about to say with the air cover that was accompanying that I almost thought that was the real ACU but nope that is an SACU which is about to casually wander into there are no SAMs why does he not have SAMs this makes no sense but there is the SACU it will be able to build whatever it wants and grind that little place up you got torpedo bombers in from Galactic Fear, going to try finishing off what's left the battleships and battle cruisers. A handful of ASF coming in from Crotalus to deal with the issue, but he is pretty much completely uh, disinterested with this situation, and I don't blame him because it's a lost cause. No matter how many ASF he throws in, he is not going to win that. And that was a control K of all of those Tech 1 engineers. Crotalus has achieved critical mass of build power with all of his support factories and everything else, and he's worried about unit cap, unit cap being 1,000. So he control K'd all those engineers to get more unit cap freed up in order to build more ASF and more toys to play with. Got a shield generator going down right here, right out of range of this base and let's see here is that uh, no that is Norgrim he does see it there is Omni up somewhere close so he is not completely in the dark but uh, the point defense is about to start firing and we're just gonna have to see what happens here Sam's going up there's an SACU I did forget about the SACUs and this does have the overcharge ability which is gonna be very handy versus the SACUs all he needs to do is plant a few overcharges in the face of that, and he will be the winner. There goes a third of the shield in one strike on that. I think that is a build power SACU, and that is a combat preset SACU. Trying to overcharge all of these point defense. He needs to stand right inside the shield and overcharge those things. Strap Bomber coming in to hit. And it is going to land a hit. The ASF is going to bypass. We've got GC right here. Could go help, but it is going to stay in the north. And here comes the slowdown as the ASF engage. Where is the Awasa? There is the Awasa. I need to keep an eyeball on him. Engineers dropping in to pick up this Yathotha wreck. And as predicted, Crotalus is going to take a powerful victory in the air. 
That is about as decisive as you get. He has 188 ASF left after killing 100% of softlies. But here comes the Awasa. There goes the engineers. So many engineers dead, and that Awasa is going to carry straight on in as fast as it can to try and strike. Control King Tech 1 engineers to try to avoid vetting this Awasa up any more than is necessary. Bomb coming in, going to wipe out all of that production and power, and he's going to make it to the back. Hovering just a bit to let his recharge come in. I think he's going to miss his bomb, though. No! Oh, that was a... Ah! Ha <laughs> ha! He was drawing the ASF to try and kill off a swarm of ASF. Probably not as effective as he would have hoped it would be because not as many ASF are following him, but he is going to survive, come around in a loop, and have enough health to drop this bomb. Oh, another ASF interception breaking. He's going to fall right here. That was unfortunate. If he had been able to land that bomb, that would have gone so much better because he would have eliminated this entire grouping here. Was there another nuke? Yes, two more nukes. Alright, nukes coming in. That is probably a nuke on this position. And where is this one? Probably here. Got another chicken, which is very low health. A single mercy would knock it out if it were to come in. But I don't see anything coming in. This nuke is in line with either one of these. Norgrim is probably going to escape this blast radius. It's going to be close, but he I think he's got it. Oh, my word. He was inside the 500 blast radius. And there is the nuke to finish off that air production. That is highly, highly unfortunate. Okay. Galactic Fear is still holding... But surprisingly, he has not actually ended it yet, and the majority of the reason for that is the large presence of hover tanks and hover artillery. You can see all the factories going down in the mid here. He was building those. TA for life. He has got a very good source of income with all of this reclaim, and he is going to be able to produce a tremendous horde of hover units. Hopefully... He can force Galactic Fear back off of this reclaim pile because that's going to be the determining factor here. And Norgrim taken out by the chicken lightning. Sorry guys, I totally missed that. I wonder if he overcharged it and then the lightning killed him. Something like that. Regardless of the exact circumstances, he was killed by the chicken in a extremely predictable turn of circumstances because he had nothing left thanks to a nuke. TA for life calling out the good game on this. I think that was specifically aimed at Norgrim, but I think it does apply to this game. The more I'm watching here, the more I think that this game has wrapped up. I was so completely hopeful for Galactic Fear because he did make so much progress on this Navy, fighting against two people on a single eco the whole way and doing it with grace but in the end when you get triple teamed air hover and navy coming at you and you start losing your reclaim income then you're gonna have problems and i think that this is about to be the end of it I have just a handful of asf here with a single strap bomber got two more combat presets moving up the mid that's going to be very difficult to take care of with their shielding and all of that other good stuff. The gun upgrades and all that. UEF SACUs are borderline imbalanced, in my opinion. For the mass that they cost, I do realize they're a little bit heavy on the power side, but for the mass that they cost, they can absolutely tear the face off of T3, and especially T4. Um, it is actually quite disturbing how hard they win, but that is a topic for another balance patch. Torpedo bombers and gunships moving in here. Got a lot of cruisers in the mix. 
Galactic Fear somehow managing to pull all of his battleships off to one side and leave his frigates to deal with the hover spam, few though they be. He needs to get more frigates to the front. Yes, battleships are awesome, but they are not good anti-frigate, anti-artillery tools. And we've got scouts all over the place for the northern team. These UEF SACUs are going to move into the main base. They're going to start laying down some fire on the infrastructure in the back. And that is going to pretty well end Softly's Gambit for air. That's his T3 HQ, the majority of his power, and a large portion of his eco. The SACU is getting separated out, so hopefully the strap bombs that are killing one will not kill the other. At least not immediately. And <laughs> bringing the strap bombers in to KO his own power generator. ASF swooping in. Hopefully to save this SACU's life so he can continue to obliterate the base. Asking if he should nuke Navy, Lanolis must have more nukes and he's halfway, not halfway, he's about 10% on a Maver, well 25%-ish, he's right at 20. Got two nukes building, one of them is loaded and one of them is not. They are going to try to nuke Navy, that is the decision. So many battleships. What are they targeted on? They're targeted on normal units. Such overkill, mini waste. I wish we had cyber battleships in here to demonstrate with. I love the faction diversity present in the navies. UEF has this uh, firing cycle that's I think 20 seconds long. And there's the nuke trying to nuke all of the battleships. That was a bad idea. He may actually kill four or five of them, though. Galactic Fury is moving into the nuke. That was a very nice nuke on the part of Lanolis. Nuke is going to land right on the edge here. And kaboom. Not as much damage as I would have hoped. About four or five battleships in that. And a lot of friendly units as well. This guy down here is still going at it. Two SACUs coming down to deal with it, but I don't think... Ah, they'll get it before the shield goes up. So much damage from that UEF comm. It is absolutely amazing. But yes, the UEF battleship ties up all of its DPS into a single volley once every 20 seconds or so. Which means that it does so much alpha damage that it is quite frankly terrifying. Two or three battleships firing simultaneously onto a single target will kill just about any structural building when you have UEF battleships. The downside of that is they overkill by massive margins on any low health uh, unit and any time they miss that's wasting inordinate amounts of damage um, and you know it has to go through the full reloading cycle before it can try again and that nuke was successful what are we trying to build here that was finally dealt with talking about a Yelona are they really gonna try to build a Yelona Oss? that would be amazing if they did I would love to see that I don't know that they're going to get it though, because there are chickens aplenty trekking across the landscape here. The other factions though have uh, interesting differences on their battleships. Seraphim is kind of the generic all-around battleship, and then Aeon has much higher damage and a faster fire rate than either Seraphim or UEF. But it does have shorter range, so it's kind of like a melee weapon. It is slightly longer range than the battle cruiser for UEF, and of similar um, damage, but it costs more and it has a little bit more health. So you kind of have to use it like you would a battle cruiser. A lot of people don't think about that when they use Aeon Navy. And then the Cybern battleship is very different. I did not realize this until relatively recently, but if you zoom in, Let's go ahead and take a look at this chicken here This dying softly is in mortal danger. He very nearly was inside the death weapon range of that Yathatha and the ball of lightning is coming out which is going to proceed to wreck everything in the general vicinity. Softly is going to escape handily though 
and live to, I was about to say live to fight another day, but he has zero combat units, so not sure how he's going to do that. The sea of blue is progressing across the map. This is really amazing to watch how many units can be produced in a short amount of time. TA for life, basically no income at the moment, surviving completely on reclaim, and he's about to bottom out on that even but still churning out so many units. The Cybern battleship has three guns across the front, which are basically the same as this, and it has one pair on the front and, well, one set of three on the front and one set of three on the back. And instead of firing all of them in a volley, it fires them sequentially. It has the highest fire rate of any of the battleships um, and the lowest damage per strike of any of the other battleships, but the total damage tallies out to the same as the Summit or the Seraphim battleship, as far as DPS is concerned. But the high fire rate, I, I would not say that they're good versus hover at all. No battleships are. But if you have to deal with hover, and you only have battleships, I would pick Cyber, because they do actually have a relatively good fire rate, and they do make good anti-unit weapons. It's kind of like anything else Siren has. They're not exactly the best base wreckers, but they do really well against enemy combat units. And there it is, folks. Finally, the naval supremacy of Galactic Fear has ended. We're at 46 minutes into the game, and the slow progression that has been Galactic Fear's naval game this entire time has finally ended. He is going to get pushed back. There is still a huge massive, gargantuan, ginormous pile of mass here, but uh, it is going to fall into the hands of the northern team, and I think that is the death knell of this game. That marks the end of the southern efforts. I think they are still going to try to get something together. The Alana Oss is building over here. I'm going to try not to flip my map again. Every time my mouse goes bloop across the screen, I'm over there on my second monitor, and then my zoom works over there. It's kind of frustrating, but I will survive. You thought the moving into the southern base should be reclaiming down here and not... There is some reclaim going on. And not rebuilding, considering the amount of combatants down here. Should be reclaiming and putting everything he can into that Yolana Oss. See what his eco looks like here. Yeah, he has plenty of power and plenty of mass. Needs to get some more assistance on that. Needs more build power. And Galactic Fear needs to get on that as well. If they could get that up, they would actually... They might actually be able to do something. Because there's a significant amount of anti-air in the area. I don't think a Strat Bomber run would actually work. Although there are so many Strat Bombers up here, it might actually get through. Let's see how many there are. Brink, how many Strat Bombers were there? 34 is the answer. 34. Five, six, thirty-six is the answer. There's a whole lot of cruisers right here as well. That is a uh, frightening amount of anti-air. Building shields around this Yolana Oss. I don't know that that's going to be enough. Three Tech 2 shields. Stratmar is moving around from the southern side. Where are they going to go? I think they're targeting Galactic Fear himself, who is building more shields. They're going to try to take out Galactic Fear, because Galactic Fear, as usual, is considered to be the main threat. And honestly, I can't argue that. Strat Bombers to the face, and just barely enough to score that kill. I wish he hadn't died. Oh, that's sad. Uh, I think they may have actually succeeded in getting that Yolana Oss up. The Yolana Oss is going to die now, because it was property of galactic fear and it was not fully built yet so it is going to go down and with the shield blip here comes the artillery i totally missed that folks the mavor is up that is a piece of machinery that you don't see every day as guile would say the uef penis of doom emerging from the earth to obliterate the other side of the map nukes coming down as many complaints as people have about the mavor i, I still i don't know I think it could be a little bit stronger, more accurate, something, but honestly it is fairly precise, fairly, although I think I may be being proved wrong at the moment. I'm not sure what that was targeted on, probably here, which means we have strike, 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 strike. 
So it needs more area of effect or something. We got nukes coming in. Nukia probably trying to cordon off the ACU. And I think that is game. Good effort on the southern team's part. Trying to read and see where the ACU is, but I can't for all of the nuke blasts. There's Softly. Trekking back towards the water, but at this point I don't think there's anything he can do about it. Got another Yathotha wrecking the base over here. Two idle Yathothas, but uh, apparently they do not want to use those. There they go. On the move now. Need to snipe off that ACU so we can end this game and get it over with. Is that a nuke launch? It is! That is... F ah, I thought it was four because I saw the missiles coming out. There's a second nuke. One and two. Are there more? Why is he nuking hover? That makes no sense. At all. None. Why isn't he nuking the production? That would make so much more sense. Because if he nukes these, all that means is more are going to replace it as soon as those leave. As soon as these die. And if he had nuked the production, he could have actually done something to stem the flow of units. Oh well. What is not meant to be is not meant to be. Alrighty guys, as we watch this wind down... I wish I could speed it up more, but unfortunately I cannot. That was an interesting set in the game. Maybe not the most epic one ever, but I do like the solid play style of Galactic Fear. Guys, if you want to win a naval game, that is the template by which you should operate. Um, pushing across slowly and steadily, not pushing too far on a slim advantage, and just slowly reclaiming your way across the navy, turning your enemy's broken and battered, ship, battered ships into vessels of your own to pound them even further into the dirt with. That is how you play navy. And uh, it is a beautiful thing to watch in progress. It's just sad that the triple team in hover, navy, and air ended that progression because I think that it could have gone a long ways towards winning this game. Additionally, it makes my heart sad that Galactic Fear died because I would have loved to see that Yolana Oss in action. I don't think it would have survived too terribly long if it did get built. Ah look, another Owasa. Because um, the Maver was coming online very shortly so I think it would have not been very long for this world. But it would have been cool to see the Alona Oz fire a couple of times. Maybe it could have made a difference. Maybe it couldn't have. I don't, I'm not saying that it would have changed the outcome of the game. But hey, everybody likes a cool game ender. Even though it might not end the game. Alright. Strat Bummer's moving in. Yith, or not Yathafa. Awasa. Circling the map. If you guys want to see, um, I actually finished my new tutorial. The tutorial for the T4 combat units. That would be direct fire, land based, air, and air T4s. Not the naval T4s or the support T4s is online. That is uh, Scathus, Monkey, Megalith for Cybern and then all the others for the other factions. Um, you can actually see I put a lot of tips and tricks in there for how to deal with and use T4s to their fullest potential. The answers to why your Wasa is not dropping bombs and how to use a T4 Mercy. You should definitely go look at that. There's quite a bit of rambling in that video, but if you want to learn a bit more about the exact specifications and uses of the T4s that you may not have thought of before, you should definitely go watch it. It is a worthwhile 30 minutes. I am interested to see if soft or not softly, if TA for Life will actually use the Awasa to double tap softly and kill him in one strike. You can kill a 17,000 health item with an Awasa in one pass, even though the bomb only does 11,000 damage. And how to do that is thoroughly explained in that video. And I would have thought that oh. That would have been hilarious if the nuke hit the Owasa. That would have been tremendously entertaining. 
I almost thought it was going to fly into each other for a second there, but it was not meant to be, regardless of how awesome that would have been. So much hover! Alright, people are quitting. That is going to be the end of it. Lanalus taking a dive. And there's the desync, there's control Ks everywhere. And that is it. But the ending of this game is the same, regardless of how you look at it. So many nukes raining down on this ACU. I think that is going to be the Deathbringer right there. And kaboom. We have conclusion. We have brought this to an end, and we don't have to watch this crawl fest go on anymore. That, guys, is Settins, the strangely comforting and overplayed map. Hope you guys enjoyed the cast. I know that I enjoyed uh, watching through this one, even though there was a little bit of stumbling here and there. And uh, hopefully I will get another good cast out at the end of this week if any of you guys have a fantastic replay. I have actually exhausted my supply, and some of you might say, but Brink, I sent you tons of replays. Well, the problem is not all of them are completely usable, and then also when, uh, when there is an extended period of time before I watch them, for some reason replays tend to corrupt in the vault. So if you want me to hang on to it for a longer period of time, you need to Dropbox, File Share, or attach the actual replay file and send it to me. Preferred method is in the comments section. Um, you can also send a message to me on YouTube. That is the most surefire way of getting it to me. But if any of you guys have an epic game, lots of action and interesting things happening, then by all means send it over and I would be happy to cast it. If I do not get a good submission, I actually have a learning cast that I can do. I may do it in addition. I haven't decided yet. It's been a while since I've done a learning cast and I think I'd be interested in tackling one again. All right, enough rambling for me. That is going to wrap up this game, this cast end this day for me. I hope all of you have a good one and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.